Hey everybody and welcome back to another Kraken Packs video. I am your host, Mr. Bevers. That's right, we're back again with another guild kit. We've got three more to go. We've got Azorius this week, so let's get right into it. Of course, you can see everything there that was on the front. You've got Asperia, Supreme Judge, Foil Alternate Art. You've got your little pin there. And if you look on the back, it tells you kind of like everything that you're going to get. You're going to get a sweet deck box. You're going to get some guild lands. You're going to get a foil... Foil rare, you're going to get a pin, you're going to get a sticker, you're going to get a die. So, plus five double-sided tokens. Wow. Fancy. So, let's see here. We've got, of course, our stuff underneath here. We've got a sticker. Big old sticker. We've got our deck box, which we talk about a couple times um, on on this channel. And, uh, let's see if we can fix it here. And someone left a comment on the last one, and they made a lot of sense. And that is that, like, these deck boxes are great um, for the fact that you can put a sleeved deck in them and it will fit. The downside is that if you put in unsleeved cards in here, they're going to move around a bunch. And the bottom of the box, the way this is designed, because it's not really flat, it's like a, one of those fold-out things... It could damage the bottom of your cards if you're not sleeving them when you're putting them in here. So you got to be very careful not to like shake these around and stuff like that when you have unsleeved cards in them. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't even think about that when I was first talking about these these boxes. But it's a very good point to bring up, so thank you very much. All right. So, of course, we've got our full art. Oh, is that uh, Lavinia? I want to say that's La is that Lavinia. I want to say Lavinia. Is Lavinia the right name? Yeah, Lavinia of the Tenth. Sweet. And then, of course, we've got our Azorius Senate Standards of Behavior for all Azorius representatives. And then there's a whole bunch of, like, rules and stuff. And then at the bottom here, it's like, here, learn is defined as... <laughs> man. So they've even got, like, a, a footnote where it's, like, giving you definitions of things and, like, making sure that you understand all of the, the verbiage that's used in all of these rules. Look at that. The extra, like, little bit of flavor that they put into these is is pretty awesome, I have to say. Um, some of them a little bit more in-depth than others. Um, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was, like, the... Maybe it was the Demir one that I opened up, and it just, like, didn't have very much in it. And I was kind of like, eh. Or maybe it was the Grawl one that just didn't have anything. I can't remember. There was one of them that I opened it, and I was like, I feel like there should be, like, words on here. And there just wasn't. And I was like, that's weird. And then, uh, anyway... So there you go, like, it's just a little bit of flavor from the Azorius Guild. And there you go. And then, of course, you've got your deck list here that has all your cards and what sets they came from. So, of course, we're going to put that off to the side over here, like so, so that we can just keep an eye on it and see if we can't figure out where all of the cards come from. So, of course, we've got our die. Ooh, the shiny little die here, which is actually a very nice die. And the symbol fits perfectly on the top of one of these D20s. Well designed. I mean, obviously it works out because the symbol is a triangle, so it worked out really well. I'm glad that they didn't like shrink it down to make it like the same size as the other symbols. And they were like, well, we might as well just use all the space because we can. Um, so that was cool. Um, again, they really, it was really hit or miss on some of these dice from this one. Um, I feel like the first set of guild dice from uh, Guilds of Ravnica was better than the ones coming out in Ravnica Allegiances. But, hey, you know, can't you can't win them all, I guess. So we've got um, our nice foil promo, full art, uh, like not full art, but alt alternate art Esperia, Supreme Judge. So there you go, nice little commander card that can be used. Or if you want to leave the decks together, go for it. And, of course, we've got our sweet Azorius pin. There it is. Nice, heavy-duty Nice metal um, pin with a uh, enamel. And then we've got the deck. So let's get right into things. And we're going to do like a bit of a mythic count. Because like I'm cu I'm always curious about the, the mythic counts in these decks. Some of them tend to have like a whole bunch of mythics. And others tend to have like none. So right now we have one. Because our guild leader is a mythic. Then we have Pride of the Clouds. Excuse me, my goodness. Pride of the Clouds. Ah, Sphinx of Foresight. Really good card in Limited uh, right now in uh, Ravnica Allegiances. 
We've got Lavinia of the 10th. She's the full art. Uh, I, I kind of feel like they could have picked something better to put on to put on this, to be honest. I'm sure there's there's some some like more epic art that they could have put on there, but at the same time, like it is very on point for Orzov. Because I mean she's basically got the uh, the she's sitting at like a podium and she's got like her scroll which is probably like the rules and commandments or whatever so like there's that right then we have a wind reaver there's a one three for five with flying and it has a whole bunch of abilities it's kind of interesting now a lot of these I haven't seen because I didn't play in the sets where they came out we got Esperia the Inscrutable, which is essentially Esperia before she became the Supreme Judge, I believe is the case. Because I believe this one came out, this is from the first, first Ravnica block, is that right? Let's see, Esperia. There. Yeah, Dissensions. And then Return to Ravnica, yeah. So this was... Uh, in Dissension, which was the first time we were on Ravnica. This was the second time we were on Ravnica, so that's why we've now moved to Supreme Judge. Then we have the Archon of the Trumative, which is from, I believe, the second time we were on Ravnica. We've got Unbreakable Formation. This card's seeing a lot of play in Standard right now with the Mono White decks. Detention Sphere, which is uh, a great card, and that's where the uh, Deputy of Detentions came from. Basically the same sort of idea, only a creature instead of a, uh, a permanent, an enchantment. We got Render Silent, which is another counterspell, um, similar to Absorb, only, you know, you don't gain the life, but it prevents them from casting any other spells. We got Dovescape. Oh my god, is this the one where you make birds? Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, counter that spell, that player creates X11 white and blue bird creature tokens with flying, where X is the spell's converted mana cost. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Sphinx's Revelation. So this is the old school Hydrocrasis. Only it's instant speed and you gain X life and draw X cards instead of half of X. Now, you don't get a creature out of the deal, but you do get to gain life and draw cards at instant speed, which is generally the end of your opponent's turn when they haven't done anything that you care about countering. We've got Warden, uh, Warrant and Warden, right? Which is a pretty nice card in Limited as well right now. And there you go. So the only mythic we got out of here was Isperia. Oh, there's our sweet bird tokens. Man. And there's our 4-4 four, four Sphinx, which I'm assuming we only got one of. Yeah, because there's only one Warrant and Warden. And then just Thopters. Okay. Cool. The bird tokens are super cool looking. Those are really cool looking. And they're 1-1 one, one blue-white birds, which is... I don't know if they ever printed that token before, to be honest. I'll have to double check that, but I don't think they did. Judges Familiar, Azorius Guild Mage, Azorius Herald, Stoic Ephemera, uh, Court Hussar. I got crushed by this in uh, in Popper when I played Popper uh, in the P Pappy Popper tournament. Holy moly! Hover Barrier, Lev. Lev, Sky Knight, Spirit of the Spires, Azorius Justicar, Skymark Rock. Look at that art. He's like bird like picking up like a burglar or something. Sphinx of New Prov, Windstorm Drake, Sky Hassar. So this is deck seems to be all about flying, right? So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten flyers. Plus your Dovescape, which makes birds. Plus your Esperia, which is a flyer, and Esperia, which is a flyer, and Wind Reaver, which is a flyer, and Pride of the Clouds, which I assume is a flyer as well, and Archon of the Trumative, which is also a flyer. Holy moly, that. So then you've got your Azorius Chanceries, which are your ba your Bounce Lands, and then your Guild Gates, of course. And then you've got your Sweet Guild Lands, which are pretty awesome. So, of course, you've got your planes with the nice sweet Azorius ring on them and your islands with the sweet Azorius ring on them. Then, of course, you've got just some, like, enchantments and spells and things. So we've got Sky Tether, Azorius Signets, very nice. We've got Summary Judgment, Azorius Charm, Dramatic Rescue, 
Oh, they put a key rune in here too. Okay, cool. Sphinx's insight and a depose and deploy. So there's where you get your Thopter tokens from. I wonder why... I didn't see anything else that made Thopters. This only makes two, right? This only makes two Thopters. So I wonder why they gave you four Thopter tokens. Right? I didn't see anything else that made Thopters. Maybe I'm just blind, but I didn't see it. Because the Depose and Deploy is the only thing that makes Thopters in this deck, from what I could see. And you have no way of getting that card back out of your graveyard once you play it. So, I don't know. I'm not sure. Huh. Well, there you have it. That's a little look at the Azorius deck. The lands are sweet. The lands are super hot. I really like them. Um, I will be taking all the lands out of these guild packs and putting them into like a, a small box for me to use for certain events and things if I want to take lands. Because um, they're just super nice basics. Like they're super cool looking. I, I like the fact that they did the style and they put the extra art in the bottom box, which is basically was just unused space until now. So, I mean, like, it's cool that they're they're trying new things and testing out new stuff with those. So there you go. Not too bad. We got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve rares plus your mythic. So 13 rare or mythic cards, um, which seems about average for these types of kits. The fact that you didn't get any more mythics is kind of interesting. Maybe they thought that the other mythics were too strong or not strong enough. Oh, I shouldn't say that. We got... What am I talking about? Sphinx's Revelation is a mythic. So we did get a mythic. Oh, my goodness. My brain just like... My brain just... That's how that works. Anyway, um, you know, sometimes we make mistakes. And for me, it's all the time. That's just how it is. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I've been your host, Mr. Bevers. I hope you enjoyed this video and this look at the Azorius Guild Kit. As always, may your pulls ever be better.